I'm standing here in the sanctuary of the beautiful John Paul II uh, Chapel. We're in the process of uh, renovating this. Uh, soon all 19 of these windows will be filled with stained glass. Uh, the pews are in place, the lighting's in place. But here in the sanctuary, we've just had the addition of these beautiful uh, wooden pieces. Uh, the altar of sacrifice here, the altar of reposition behind me, and then in front of me, the uh, ambo. And it's just a thrill to me to see these things. When they arrived, uh, I just come back from a long trip, and I was very tired, but I knew they were in here, so I came right over here. It was about 10 o'clock at night, and I stayed for an hour, I think, in this chapel, just glorying in these, in these wonderful pieces. Uh, I'll draw your attention to something first. Right behind me, this great Rarados, which has the, has the three arches. That's an old Christian uh, motif, borrowed from the Romans. So a Roman victory arch, like the arch of uh, Titus or Constantine in Rome, was meant to symbolize the victory of the emperor. And he, he you know, parade through this victorious arch. Well, the Christians took that as a kind of ironic commentary because Christ crucified and risen, Paul says, is like a victorious Roman general who is now parading behind him his conquered enemies, namely sin and death, right? So they took the triple arch and said the true victory is not of Caesar, but the victory of the cross. And look right in the middle, we have that beautiful uh, wooden crucifix. No Roman would have expected that. <laughs> they knew what the triple arch meant. They meant, oh yeah, that's victory. But in the middle of it, a crucified criminal? It's the opposite of victory. So the Christians, with a great irony, uh, did that. And we're doing that here. Real victory uh, takes place through the cross of Jesus. Notice, please, how those three arches are mimicked in the uh, main altar here which has those three beautiful uh, arches. Notice in the middle of each one is a little cross. Same idea. Uh, in the middle of the Roman victory arch is the true victory of the cross. Notice too, on this main altar, you have the uh, columns and these beautiful capitals. If you can come in close and see the detail, it's, it's spectacular. But this is the Corinthian uh, capital, which is the highest status uh, uh, symbol. So that belongs on this main altar, the altar of sacrifice. Behind the altar of reposition, which holds the tabernacle, also a very dignified place, but has the next level down of, um, of dignity, namely the Ionic column. It has the triple arch as well with the crosses, so the same idea. And then the ambo, the place where the word is proclaimed, also has Corinthian arches on it, Corinthian capitals. But they're split, they're divided, and it's signaling just a slight demotion, if you want, because of the centrality of the Eucharist, though the word is, is at a very high level of dignity, not quite the same dignity of the real presence of Jesus. And so the, the capitals and the columns are expressing these different levels of, uh, of dignity. Notice, too, in the Rarados, the columns are at the, the lowest level, which is the Doric uh, column. The Doric, though, is also a symbol of manliness, for the classical people. And of course, John Paul II was known as a kind of a manly figure. And so in his chapel, the Doric column uh, symbolizes that. But the sheer beauty of these pieces, they come from Thistle Farms, which is a wonderful woodworking company up in uh, Wisconsin. And they did just a spectacular job. They're meant to be um, a contemplative pieces, I think, that you come in and you look at them in their, in their splendor. Also, the altar for the classical tradition is redolent of Christ. The altar symbolizes Christ. So in his beauty, his nobility, his dignity, that's all um, symbolized here. So I'm, I'm just especially pleased with these uh, beautiful pieces. Mm -hmm.